Hey there, welcome to Studio 5. We've got a great show ahead. Singer Gloria Gaynor shares how she survived life's challenges in her new documentary. The actor who plays Jesus in The Chosen takes us inside season four as it's rolled out in theaters for the next few weeks. And we're looking at the great work of Bishop T.D. Jakes away from the pulpit. Before we get to those stories, let's fire up the countdown of the five big stories in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are the first two. At number five. And the Grammy goes to your power, Lecrae and Tasha Pop. Highlights from this year's Grammy Awards, which includes wins for Lecrae for best contemporary Christian music performance. The imprint of God is on each and every one of y'all's lives. Whether you take home an award or not, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you made this music not to win an award, but to impact the world with the gift that God has put in you. Never forget that. And a win for Ty Tribbett for Best Gospel Album. To God be all the glory for all the things that he has done. I did not expect to be up here, so I echo Lecrae. At number four. Arr, we are back. We're back. Ya regresamos. We're back. We're back. We're it back. is day one of filming. It's really cold. <laughs> back and with a strong opening in theaters for the highly anticipated fourth season of The Chosen. I am the life that overcomes death. I guess you're not holding back anymore. I can't. The first three episodes of the season finished number two at the box office, pulling in nearly six million dollars for the weekend. So here we sit at season four. How would you describe this season first for Jesus and then for those chosen to follow him, if you will? How would you describe it? Well, in season three, uh, we talked about that the theme was come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think a good thing of, uh, a, good, a good perspective on this season to notice is that this time Jesus is weary and heavy laden and he needs rest. I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. And with the countdown now started, we turn to the story of Grammy-winning recording artist Gloria Naylor. Her mega hit is I Will Survive, but it almost didn't become a hit. And that's just one of many lessons learned in a new documentary. She's in Studio 5 with us to share more. For the last 40 years, I've been telling you I will survive. But I never told you how. It was a fun time. I will survive. Top the charts at number one. My fan base growing like wildfire. People were beginning to recognize me on the street. But that girl was lonely. Her husband was her manager. He called all the shots. I was so afraid of abandonment. I allowed myself to be controlled. Hang on, baby. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Briefly tell us about this documentary uh, and the unspeakable challenges uh, you faced on a journey to build your life into a, a second act, if you will. Well, um, the, the, the documentary is very much about um, the gospel album that I recorded that I uh, was hindered from recording for many, many years by my previous management and just the making of the album. I felt a fist grab me in my chest and said, that's enough. And I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I realized that's what that was. That was God. I can imagine it takes courage to share some of the more painful, challenging sides uh, of ourselves. What made you open up and share? Well, I, I, I never thought I was unique enough to have uh, problems that no one else has had. So I wanted to share uh, my journey so that people would come to understand that you can get through all of this, especially with your faith. If you have faith in the Lord and you, and you are um, purposing to follow him and his directions and purposes for your life. I really want to inspire people with the faith that has brought me through all of the difficult times. I had really, really deep scars from abuse. And you grow up feeling unknown. Do you have a prayer or hope for what you want the audience to take away from your journey? I want them to walk away with confidence um, and believe that, that you can make it through. Um, that these trials and tribulations 
as they say, often only come to make you strong. Gloria Gaynor is just kind of the poster child of people just getting through to point to what is her source of strength was just a cool idea. At first I was afraid. I would. Yes, ma'am. And if you are purposing in your life to get benefit from these struggles, then you will be stronger and you will have something not only to feel good about yourself, but to, as I'm trying to do, share with other people. Well, the film certainly deals with present day, but it also takes us back in time to the disco era and your music. Uh, what can we look forward to hearing and seeing when it comes to your music in this film? First I was afraid, I was petrified, kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. Well, more music that's going to be inspirational and encouraging, uplifting, inspiring. That is always my purpose. Be honored like this. It inspires me to keep going. You know, when I look back over it, I can truly say that the joys were more. There were more joys and more accomplishments than there were whole setbacks and, and, and failings. But I've learned to look at the bright side, you know, see see what's happening good. What's, what's the good in this? There's always something good. And hold on to that and capitalize on that and, 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 and let go of the negativity. And that's what I would like for young people to gather from this, that um, whatever trial and tribulations God allows you to go through, it is to make you stronger. It is to make you wiser. Um, it is to make you a better person and, and, and prepare you for a better life. All of those struggles make us stronger and help us to get to where we want to be, help us to do what we want to do, help us to create what we want to create and survive and thrive. Gloria Gaynor's documentary, I Will Survive, hits theaters nationwide for one night only. It's February 13th. Still to come, he plays Jesus in The Chosen. You Pharisees. You cleanse the outside of a cup and the dish, and then you eat and drink food that goes into a body. Jonathan Rumi takes a seat in Studio 5 with a behind-the-scenes look at the all-new season. Is season four the most emotional season for Jesus to date? Yes, it has been. Yeah, it's challenging, emotional. Yeah, it was, it was the hardest season on so many levels for, I think, all of us. At number three, The Hill. Ricky, I've seen you out there swinging that stick, even when you're suffering pain. But you can't play baseball. You're going to get ridiculed, <laughs> and you're going to wind up with an injury that you'll never get over. Streaming in the top spot on Netflix, five months after its release in theaters. You seen this? Major League trials. You're going to paralyze him. I don't need you filling him full of false hope. He's my son. Based on a true story, Dennis Quaid stars in the remarkable journey of baseball player Ricky Hill to the major leagues. You play a pastor mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. What's the deal? Why do you want to do that? Uh, story? Ricky Hill, who mm -hmm. was uh, you know a handicapped kid, had braces, and uh, the guy could hit. And he has a very uh, he had a vision for his son that he was going to be a preacher. He felt like his son was called. But you know what a calling is for a preacher. You had to feel it yourself. And um, so it's a father-son story, which I'm really attracted to doing. Ricky, baseball had to end eventually. Time to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. First time you ever talked to me like a man is to tell me to forget the only thing I ever loved. At number two, my body's weathered and just ask yourself, how would you be if you didn't know the day you were born? Mourning the loss of singer and songwriter Toby Keith, who died Monday at age 62. Back in 2022, Keith diagnosed with stomach cancer and was receiving chemo, radiation, and surgery, speaking out about his difficult treatment. This is a roller coaster, and it takes a little while to get your brain wrapped around it, and then um, you get to a point where you just say, hey, this is what I do, and you can't let it define, you know, your future. 
Look out your window and smile Don't let the old man in With that, we've got just one more story to share in this week's countdown that's coming up in just a few moments. We turn now to the all new season of The Chosen. It's the story of Jesus's life and those chosen to walk closely with him. We're sitting down with the star, Jonathan Rumi. He plays Jesus. You Pharisees, you cleanse the outside of a cup and the dish, and then you eat and drink food that goes into a body that inside is full of greed and wickedness. You fools! Did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give as alms those things that are within, and behold, everything is clean for you. Are you saying giving alms is more important than being ritually I'm clean? I'm saying that your obsession with what is clean and unclean was farther than God intended. Is season four the most emotional season for Jesus to date? Yes, it has been. Yeah, it's challenging, emotional. Yeah, it was, it was the hardest season on so many levels for, I think, all of us. Look at these people! What have you done for them? Watching it, I mean, you are so now identified with Christ in popular culture. Has playing Jesus made it difficult to be Jonathan? At times, at times, um, I explore this in a bit in a, in a docu series mm -hmm. I just released called Jonathan and Jesus, mm -hmm. and so you kind of get to see that trajectory uh, from earlier on in my career playing Jesus to almost present day. And uh, yeah, it can it can be it can be a challenge, but it's one that um, at the end of the day I'm I'm grateful to be a part of it because it's just doing so much for so many people. We're now sitting really in the middle. So we've got three behind and three ahead. What's that feel like? I remember talking to you before the start of season one. My first, I think yes. you were my first official interview. Yes. Yeah. It's What's surreal, that? man. It's uh, yeah, it's a trip. I don't know. I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to to really experience what all all of it means until until it's done. I'm trying to just be present and enjoy every moment of the process. Don't want to give too much away, but there's a moment that you would think Jesus should be the answer to change a difficult situation. <laughs> and you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Even some things the Father does not tell me, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's going to be one that people wrestle with. And that is what we wrestle with as believers. Why this and not that? Why them and not me? Why me and not them? And, uh, you know, that's where trust and faith and surrender uh, come into the equation of, of the spiritual life. You told us it would be like that with how you lived. The first three episodes of The Chosen are in theaters right now, followed by episodes four and six on February 15th. And finally, episodes seven and eight, February 29th. We need to take a quick break right here, but before we do, it's time to share this week's story and pictures. Here's your Studio 5 snapshot. We pause to pay tribute to Carl Weathers. The actor and athlete died in his sleep Thursday at age 76. The six foot two inch former NFL linebacker brought unforgettable charisma to the role of Apollo Creed in the Rocky franchise back in 1976. Weathers made a name for himself in the Rocky franchise and the Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian. Weathers' long career took him beyond the boxing ring with some 80 film and television credits. It's a life well lived and this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Still ahead, helping those in need. One of our pillars um, is around workforce readiness. We work with the, the younger community, but students around introducing them to jobs that will, and opportunities that will help literally help change the direct trajectory of their lives. The president and CEO of the TD Jakes Foundation shares the Potter's House pastor's work away from the pulpit. At number one. I don't think you can understand who Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was and his legacy 
without understanding the legacy of Malcolm X. A behind the scenes look at the newest installment of the National Geographic Genius Series, MLK X. Black men are in prison. How many more have to be slain for America to say enough is enough? The two iconic geniuses in this story, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, alongside the women they loved, their wives, Coretta Scott King and Dr. Betty Shabazz, also streaming now on Hulu and Disney Plus. Why is this series and this story you think relevant to tell now? Because I know many people will think, well, I know about Malcolm X. I know about Martin Luther King. Why now? We're in this together. How can I help you? We will lead people to real equality in this country. Honestly, I feel like, for one, we can never, it's a dangerous place to get to when we when we feel like we've exhausted um, uh, revering uh, or telling our history. It's not about the greatest hits. It's not about just the, the this speech or this march. We're getting the in-between. We're really getting to see them fully as human beings that come with insecurities and questions and, and doubt, right? All of what makes them to be the men and women that we come to learn about. And in doing so, I, I hope that people will walk away seeing themselves in Martin, Malcolm, Betty, and Coretta. What you're doing is just, never question that. And that is your number one story this week. Welcome back to Studio 5. The T.D. Jakes Foundation helps struggling people. They're poor, underserved, and often underrepresented in places of power and influence. Kelly Cornish is the president and CEO of the foundation, and she's joining us with an inside look at Jakes's work away from the pulpit. Hello, I'm Kelly Cornish, president and CEO of the T.D. Jakes Foundation. Now, those of us who think of Bishop T.D. Jakes, we know him, we know the Potter's House, we know his sermons and his ministry, but what is the T.D. Jakes Foundation? You know, the T.D. Jakes Foundation is part of that larger ecosystem. This is gonna have a great impact, not only on their finances, but on their health and on their children and on their livelihood. And we were formed three years ago, um, and literally to be another engine or catalyst to help um, figure out how do we close this um, uh, economic uh, gap that exists within um, black and brown communities. And what's your new connection to this organization and why did you choose to take on this leadership role? So my, my role, I am the president and CEO of the TD Jakes Foundation. And you know, um, I have been a huge follower of the Jakes family for for decades. Um, I've watched him, I've watched his wife over the years. Um, I've grown in my faith. Uh, he was like a virtual mentor to me through his books and just through his messages. Um, and so a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to work on a project um, at my previous employer and uh, we were looking to partner. It was a convergence of minds dedicated to building bridges and creating lasting change. And just a few weeks before um, I was scheduled to retire, I received a call from TD Jakes to say, to ask me to come and run his foundation. Now some financial giants like Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, they're partnering with this foundation. What do they bring to the table and why is this going to work, you think? Goldman Sachs has been, has partnered with us for a couple of years now on one of our signature programs and that's our STEAM academies science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. And so during the summer, they have a couple of hundred of their engineers that come out and work with students um, that we bring into an academy from um, all different walks of life to teach them about a project. This past year it was coding. Um, and then week two, uh, we had a minority owned firm called Robotopia that came in to teach them about robotics. So um, that's how we partner with major corporations and small businesses to really help um, be a catalyst um, in the lives of, of people from the, of children from the communities. Can you share some real life examples of the foundation's impact? As the chairman of the T.D. Jakes Foundation, I am extremely excited and delighted to work with Workforce Dallas, sponsored in part and powered by the Mavericks 
to present a vision that we have been working on for a long time, and that is Pathways to Opportunities. We're truly focused on salaries and benefits that will help change um, the, tra the trajectory and move people from one tax bracket to another. So we really lean in more specifically with major organizations to say, if you want to see this happen, partner with us and we'll, we'll make this happen together. Now, I know in learning about the foundation, there are some initiatives that focus specifically on girls and STEM. Why that focus? You know, we, um, we understand again that there is a deficit in diverse communities um, with people in the sciences. And so um, we, we want to help close that gap, more specifically getting women of color into um, the sciences is key for us. Well, we're already a month in, but what can we look forward to in 2024? I'm just going to steal our visionaries words from a few years ago. Get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> we are so excited about 2024. Um, the big, the big project ahead of us right now is in Atlanta and we'll be hiring staff there and really beginning to um, help build out that community there as well. So that's one, we'll continue with our STEAM academies um, in the Atlanta area, as well as our hiring mixers um, in Dallas and Atlanta, and uh, just begin to, to spread our wings um, with some of the work that we've done as we stand on the shoulders of our visionary TDJ. So stay tuned as we embark on this journey together. Thank you for being a part of our story. The T.D. Jakes Foundation is looking to expand its reach to more communities with entrepreneurship, home ownership, workplace literacy, and so much more. Hey there, welcome back to Studio 5. Music helps us to bring you this show every single week, and this week's soundtrack is coming from Justin Timberlake. Take a listen, and you're going to hear why Selfish is what's playing in my ear this week. So if I get jealous, I can't help it. I want every bit of you. I guess I'm selfish. It's bad for my mental, but I can't fight it when you're out looking like you do. But you can't hide it. No. But you're in a frame of baby, you could bring you. Glad your mama made you. Selfish. On that musical note, we are just about out of time for this week's edition of Studio 5, so let's take a moment and look ahead to see what's in store on next week's rundown. She's a former host of The Talk and the longtime host of Big Brother, but now she's talking and getting personal, sharing even more from her unique memoir. But first, God. Take me back to the day you're dropping your son off at school and you decide I'm gonna go searching for a church. <laughs> it was Holy Spirit moving. It was that morning that I woke up to an email from my favorite aunt, who is a born again Christian. She and my uncle, he is a not, he's a cancer survivor and a 9-11 survivor. He was in the North Tower when it got hit. She emailed me that her friend from her church in New Jersey had been praying for me and my family and was touched by Holy Spirit to say, to call my aunt and say, you gotta tell your niece Julie about the gospel. Hey, please be sure and join us for that story and so much more come next week. This week, we've got time for just one more thing. We're gonna give that to Gloria Gaynor. She's got this week's final word. As we age, many of us think it's over. What would you say to older people uh, about living their lives on purpose? Life isn't over until you take your last breath. So you can always, you can always grow. You can always make, in fact, the only sign of life is growth. So you're on top, you know, whether it feels like it or not, you know, we need to not go so much by our feelings, but as uh, the things that are real, which are spiritual, those are the things that are so much more real than the petty little things that we get ourselves bogged, out, bogged down in. Gloria Gaynor, thank you. That's a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then please come right back here and see what Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.